Hello?
finish it off. A couple very small individual dots of the pure bleached linen. Only at the most raised areas of these dots. We are uh, moving along really well. We've only got three minutes. Hello, hello. Can you guys hear me? Really now?
Ah, uh, there we go. Welcome, everybody. Alright, glad to see you guys in here. Uh, my name is Mike. I'm with Well Forge Manager Painting. Uh, and CavCon, or the people at Cav, or Telling Games, excuse me, uh, has been uh, grateful, graceful enough to invite me here to, you know, show off my stream. Uh, it's been a while since I uh, streamed on Twitch, so bear with me if there's any uh, issues with my camera or with audio, stuff like that. Uh, but I'm happy to be back in the uh, on the old Twitch. Um, my socials are here. I believe I can type this in, see if I can remember all of my commands. Probably not. I don't, I probably haven't leaked my night bot or move bot in forever. But, um, you can find me all over the internet. I'm usually on Twitter. I also do, uh, tutorials on YouTube. I have a Discord server. I'm on Facebook, Instagram. If you guys want to follow me, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, but today, we are going to be doing some battle damage for beginners. And right here, you see I have a ghost, a haunt, and a... Uh, oh god, what is that? Is that a butcher? God, I can't remember. I think it's a butcher. I have it written on the bottom. I'm pretty new to the cav, but... Um, yeah. I've been painting these for the last couple of days, and I've had a lot of fun. So, um, so far, these are my... Yeah, we got the ghost. We got the haunt. And I believe this is the Butcher. Yep, the Butcher. So I have painted them already with some Inquisitor Purple. And they're pretty much, for the most part, done. I just need to add the battle damage, and I'll show you how you do that, and some tips and tricks, and all that fun stuff. So, uh, again, thank you guys for coming along. And, um, yeah, for the next hour, we'll have some fun up until uh, Calf Ball. So, let's go and get started. So starting with the ghosts, I'm going to find some some foam that I use for, that you would see in you know, other manager packages, stuff like that. Uh, we're going to be using this to dab on some uh, pure black, and that's going to be the first part of our battle damage here. So I'm just going to tear off. And this is a pretty common trick. Uh, probably, a lot of you probably already know how to do this sort of thing, but... Essentially, what I'm going to do is to dab on just a little bit of paint, kind of sporadically, in some areas that, you know, would sustain, you know, quite a bit of damage. Uh, you know, the front part of the um, the cav, uh, some areas that maybe uh, dirt and grime I've get, gotten into and, you know, created damage that way. Stuff like that. So, got to find my pure, pure black here. here. I'm, I'm using Reaper's, Reaper's pure, pure black. black. Get that shaken, shaken up, put a little bit on my wet palette here. I don't know if that's properly shaken up, but we'll see. But here, I tore this little piece of foam into a spear. I'm just going to dab a little bit on my palette, then wipe away most of it. Oh, thank you so much for the five tier one gifts. That's awesome. Thank you so much. So I'm going to start from the bottom. I'm going to assume, you know, if I'm thinking that these are going to be in the battle, a lot of ground troops, all the infantry would be shooting towards the legs, uh, something like that. So I'm going to start just kind of dabbing in the corners of the um, of the mechs here, and just getting just a little bit of damage going that way, and just a little bit of dabbing there. Hopefully you guys can see that. So just a little bit there on the, kind of the corners on the edges of each little, um, for break these down to like little polygons. Um, 
just dabbing on the corners of those or a lot of wear and tear would happen. Those airs would chip pretty easily, I would think. And especially on like the treads and the feet here, you can go a little bit heavier. I'm also going to be putting some mud on here too, but just dab, dab, dab. Especially on the bombs here, just going to town on the dabbing. JS Twitch and MechBoy21, thank you for the follows. Greatly appreciate it. How you guys doing today? And just dabbing all this, trying to hit the corners as much as I can. Corners tend to be the weak point uh, of a lot of structures, and just especially with these many kind of exposed little polygons, I think there would be a lot of wear and tear on those areas. So you can do as little or as much as you want to, and definitely not to be neat about it. So I don't know how well you can see that. If I need to move my light, just let me know. Uh, but got plenty of little wear all across the legs here. Let me get some over here too. Cav boss, thank you for the follow. Greatly appreciate it. Little wear there. And especially like in any flat areas, I'm trying to get a nice big um, area of battle damage, and I'll show you how I highlight that earlier to kind of make it more 3D. But I don't want too much on the top here. I've already got that pretty much painted. Uh, I'm just going to leave all the battle damage usually pretty much down here. And I think I'm also going to do some heat bluing of the uh, guns here on both the Ghost and the Butcher. Might have to get some more black in there. So we got some large areas here where I've kind of dabbed that bl pure black, and I'm going to try to make these look a little bit more 3D. And the way that I kind of think about it, if we have our cav here and we have sunlight, you know, from a zenithal point all the way up here, pushing, uh, you know, shining down, the light is going to catch on the very bottom part of this battle damage because we want that damage to kind of sink in underneath, you know, this Inquisitor purple or make it look like it's sinking underneath that. So we're going to be adding highlights on the bottom parts of the of the battle damage and 
kind of leaving some shading, you know, a little bit more you know, reinforcement of that black on the top part of this. So here, I don't know if you can see it, I have some Inquisitor purple here. Let's add just a little touch of white, make it a little more pastel-y, pastel-y, pastel. -y, pastel. A little bit more. So I'm going to try to adjust my lights. Hopefully you guys can see a little bit better. I'm going to try not to knock over a bunch of stuff on my desk. Come on. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And I'm using a uh, digital camera so it's going to show up with this little heads up for a little bit, but it should go away here in about 30 seconds or so. And it's one of the focus in that part. I'm gonna set this uh, manual focus. should be able to see a little bit better now. But just on the bottom parts of where we dabbed in that black, I'm going to add some highlights. Uh, this one just happens to be on the, the edge there. If I can get my brush to work, let's try that again. Just, just aiming for the bottom, bottom of this battle damage, damage and just... This foot here. And of course, you don't have to go deep in here with a brush to highlight this. So a little just sponge is pretty much good enough for the uh, tabletop. But doing this does bring out a lot of detail, and it is pretty easy. You're just dotting the bottoms of all the places where you dabbed on this black. bit there.
but this uh, this black that I dabbed on here, that's actually going to serve as what's going to look like kind of the primer. We're actually going to do a little bit of italics on top of this black to make it look like this battle damage has kind of gone underneath the paint, underneath the primer, has actually scratched the actual metal. So. Just... If I want to get here on the on the butt plate as well. And you can definitely do this with the um, piece of scrap phone as well. You don't want to use your brush. And you just dab similar, similarly where you dab the black. Definitely want to get this part here. Mark a little X here to make sure I'm keeping my cabin frame. Also, while I'm doing this, I'm going to add little little scratches. And one thing to remember, because these are, you know, 10 millimeter uh, scale, uh, the scratches you want to do on this, especially if you just want to see, if you just want to be just a little, you know, a, I guess a minor scratch, but something would leak out of it. Uh, the scratch is going to be a lot smaller on here than you would do like any on a 28, uh, one than 28 scale model. So instead of being a big honking slash, I'm going to do tiny little little scratches with pure black here. And any scratches you make like this, you do want to put a highlight underneath it like you would your other battle damage. Oop, I think that was the wrong color. Get the right quizzer of purple there. A touch of white just to make it a little bit brighter. Pretty subtle, but it's looking all right so far. And while I'm here, I'm going to take some a grill and earth, and I'm going to apply this all over the feet, like it's been tracking through mud. So I don't want a, I don't want to ruin my good brush for this. So we're just going to take this yieldy 
Walmart brush. Give this a good shake. And just straight from the pot, just a little, nice little glob here. We're just going to kind of spike it all over the feet. Almost kind of looks like frosting, but... There we go. Thank you. this brush to the side trying to get it all over my table and next I'm going to be taking a little bit of some gunmetal from Army Painter we're gonna do a little bit of highlighting on our scratches that we made And especially on the parts here where the um, the black paint is on the upper part of any of these uh, polygons essentially that's where I like to highlight with just a little bit of metallic paint just to make it look like it's been scratched off down to the metal Just a little dab there, and definitely on the little butt plate here. And again, just like the um, the black that we dabbed on here, you can also dab on the metal as well. If you just want to get these quickly on the table, but of course, get a lot more control if you use a brush. But these uh, calves are a part of my Hammer of Cardolis Hammer of Cardolis uh, attack squad, and I'm still building my army. So if anybody has suggestions on what I should add on to that, uh, so far I got the Ghost, the Haunt, uh, the Butcher, and a Pillager, which I'm not fully done with. So I'm looking to add some uh, vehicles to it. If anybody has any suggestions.
I think I was looking at you know, some outlaws and something else I can't remember offhand. I still got some of this on my finger. Wipe that off. All right, so there is where we're at so far. Got some nice piling so far. So now I'm going to do some heat bluing on the guns here. I'm going to Hey, thank you so much. Oh, uh, what am I going to use here? <laughs> Got a couple of glazes, got some Gullum and Blue and some Blood Letter from Citadel. Should get these nice and shaken up pretty well. Start off with some Gullum. And you don't have to use these specific glazes, you can use. Um, any blue paint that you have, uh, just set it down to a really nice glaze consistency. But got some golden blue on there, and now I'm gonna dry off about next to all of it. I'm gonna test on my thumbnail here. Should be really, really light. And I'm going to start here and I'm going to work my way towards the edge of the gun. And just do kind of one pass at a time and let it dry before I go over it again. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Maybe. Uh, put it back on manual. And let's do. Oh, that's just making it worse. do this. Get this corgi hair off my hand there.
Same idea with the second gun here. Uh, right now I'm just doing some battle damage on this ghost. Um, I did some uh, dabbing with some black paint and made some battle damage everywhere. Also did some highlighting and some um, texture paint on the feet. And now I'm applying some heat bluing to the guns. Nope, oh, don't forget the, the edges here. Gonna do the same thing over here. So we got those are nice and blued. I'm trying to move my lights back up here. Let's see if we can get. Yeah, these lights don't want to work with me today. Holy crap! Let me do this. Got that. Come on, lights. Work with me. Okay. Nope, don't want to record. Just wanted to autofocus. There we go. Maybe. It doesn't want to autofocus on the parts where I want to autofocus. But now I'm going to take some blood letter. And same kind of deal here, but I'm only going to be working on the tips. Oh, thank you, Dave, for the follow. Greatly appreciate it.
You guys hear me? All right, sorry about that. I accidentally pushed the uh, button too hard and started recording. Awesome. And this might be a little too red for me. So that shouldn't be that dramatic. And I really don't have... You know what? We're going to call an audible. Instead of using blood letter, I'm going to try to use some phototonic orange. If I can find my pokey tool. And I'm going to treat this like I did my uh, other glazes. So I'm going to thin this down quite a bit. And... Oops. Where's my wash? So I'm mixing that orange with some wash medium on my palette. Get it nice and thin on there. And then I'm just gonna... So the base coat is Inquisitor Purple. And you can find that on the uh, Talon Games website. So hopefully I can cover up this blood letter because we want our heat bluing to go from a blue to an orange color. And if I really wanted to make it fancy and if I had more time, I would do a uh, kind of a transition from blue to purple to orange. Yeah, I thought it was pretty fitting. I'm Again, I'm still pretty new to Cav, but looking through the book, I saw that the Hammer of, Cardola, Car, blah, 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 Hammer of Cardolis looked pretty cool. And kind of researched my colors a little bit and thought Inquisitor Purple would be pretty close to something like that. So I'm going to work on the other side now with this really, really nice thin down orange. And I'm going to go back and reinforce, reinforce my blue a little bit. But we also get that nice kind of color contrast from that blue the orange. This may take a couple coats.
and some of the yellow in this orange is trying to make green because I'm putting it on top of blue. So this is going to definitely take a couple of coats back and forth. But essentially just here is start with the blue and paint towards the edge of your, the barrel of your gun. Let that dry. Apply orange and kind of go back and forth and kind of work on the uh, smooth through the transitions as best you can. But so far, got nice blue guns. I'm going to go back with some of my Gullum in blue glaze. And basically you just want this to be as thin as I can get it. You definitely want to get into all the cracks and crevices since that heating when you fire this gun is going to affect all of that. So you don't want to leave out any areas on your gun barrel. Yeah, we got some some bluing there. So I'm going to switch over to my butcher, and I'm going to do the same thing on the, um, the little mini guns here. Take some of that blue, get rid of most of it, and applying glazes. I like to think of it as kind of like mowing a lawn almost. Uh, you don't really want to go over the same area you know, twice, um, give it one pass, let it dry, do it again. So I'm just going to do this top third of the barrel. And if I wanted to extend the blue part of this heat bluing, I'd probably mix his glaze with a little bit of uh, some sort of like medium, like a wash medium or something to kind of thin it out and do the uh, middle third here. Just so we have a nice transition from actual metal to the heating, heat bluing. So while that's drying, I'm going to do the same thing to the other gun.
just refill on my brush when I need to. Try not to let it pool, just kind of smoothing it out as I go. I'm going to give another coat of a glaze on both guns now, just to really deepen that blue. And if you have an airbrush, so this goes a hundred times faster. You would just angle your airbrush over this way to kind of help transition uh, from metal to that blue. And it only takes about just a coat. But we could do it with a brush, no problem. Okay, there we go. Got nice blue. On that part there. And actually I'm gonna mix my blood letter and my golden blue together to kind of give a purplish and see if this will transition better into an orange. So same sort of deal here. Uh, now I'm just doing a 50-50 mix of golden blue and blood letter. And focusing more on the tip here. And this part's going to be pretty subtle. It'll just help us kind of establish our blood letter or our orange color on the uh, very ends of the barrel here. And while I'm here, I have not actually used any wash on the barrels yet, but since we're doing heat blowing, instead of using like a, uh, you know, like Nolan oil or a really, really thin down black paint, I'm actually using some Dragon Off Nightshade, just because I have it handy. And this is going to be my shade for the uh, top third of the barrel here. So, let's get a little bit there, and we're just going to deepen...
just to really reinforce that this is a different color than the rest of the minigun. So let's pin this in all the little grooves here. I don't knock my camera. But yeah, it looks like we're wrapping up here. Of course, stay tuned to Talon Games for some Cav Ball. That'd be pretty, pretty exciting to watch that. But it truly is kind of a small world. I didn't realize Talon Games is so close to where I live. I didn't think Kansas was that cool to have, you know, anything miniature related nearby. But they just happen to be pretty much in the next town over for me, so. Hopefully one day be able to check out the store, visit in person. So I just added some wash there, just a nice dark blue to kind of accentuate the armor blue that we did. Now I'm going to use some of my orange. Which again is just a thinned down phototonic orange with, oh geez, I just got paint all over my camera. Rip. Oh well. And some wash medium. Uh, Dave, Wellforge, do you have a brand slash type of brush preference? Uh, absolutely. I swear by the Raphael 8404. Uh, this is a size one. I have, well, one, no wait, that's a, nope. So one, two, so I got four of them that I've gone through, and these brushes are absolute workhorses. Um, my, this is actually the very first one I used when I started painting miniatures, and this was probably about three years ago, and still kind of holds a point. And I've been, you know, painting with these pretty much every day for the past like three years. Uh, so definitely, if you want a good brush, Raphael 8404, uh, do get it from a kind of a reputable reputable art site. I've tried buying brush, the same kind of brushes from Amazon. Uh, kind of like this uh, Series 7, if I can find it. Where did I put it? Like this Windsor Newton is actually just a knockoff. So definitely would recommend something like Dick Blick Art. To, if you want to purchase one of these, they're only about 20 bucks, but that's going to be the best 20 bucks you'll ever spend. So yeah, definitely recommend. And even if they get old and uh, worn out, you can still use them for, you know, not as precise work. But yeah, definitely I use this particular brush every single day. But definitely I've heard good stuff about Windsor Newton. I just kind of unfortunate the one that I got with it was a very, very obvious knockoff. So, but I've heard people swear by those, same with uh, Rosemary and Company, I believe they're called. But definitely the Kalinsky Sable brushes, I absolutely see why people swear up and down about these. Um, definitely a convert.
So definitely still this orange is pretty bright on top of this blue. So when this dries, I would actually probably go over it with uh, just a another thin layer of our Goldman blue just to bring it down a notch. Or even something like a purple wash too would uh, help quite a bit. But yeah, only got a couple minutes left of the uh, on the stream. Uh, anybody have any questions or any closing thoughts, comments? Are you guys enjoying the con so far? And again, thank you guys for coming out and just hanging out. Nice chill stream. Always love these. Um, again, I do a lot of stuff on YouTube. Uh, links are down below. Uh, a lot, you can check me out on Twitter as well. I hang out a lot around there. That's great. Uh, mentor community there definitely would be preaching the good word of cav as much as i can to my followers there because yeah these are really cool i really love these minis i just they're just so dang cute i love the 10 millimeter scale and i definitely can't wait to get more i have a good handful of stuff that uh talent games was kind enough to give to me and i definitely can't wait to paint those so but yeah just kind of a little overview of what we did so far uh, again, just use a, if I can find it, just use a regular old sponge, or not sponge, but, you know, piece of packing, piece of packing foam, if I can speak correctly. Uh, dabbed it with some black, uh, you know, dabbed as much as I could off of that and just dabbed pretty much everywhere. Uh, reinforced with some highlights on the bottom, uh, added some mud on the feet here. Add a little bit of uh, metallic paint on the tops here to kind of highlight um, the little blackened areas and did some heat blowing so but yeah definitely uh, battle damage is pretty easy to do it's a lot of fun and be pretty messy with it as well uh, so yeah hope this streamed help you uh, guys you know learn a thing or two um, yeah, and I hope to see you guys around soon. Uh, stick around, go to uh, Talon Games Online to check out some cavballs. So, with that, you guys have a great rest of your Sunday. Take care.